Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're here with a new series, Europa Universalis 4. Finally, months after release, <laughs> two big updates to the game, and I'm finally doing a series on it. So strap in for some um, early modern European history, I think would be the time frame that this covers. Early modern up to the modern period, obviously. And we are going to be going with the wonderful nation of England. Pip pip, cheerio. So, um, <clears throat> the starting point of England is good, but um, we're at war with France, so that's that's not so good. Now, there's people out there who can probably win the Hundred Years' War without a sweat. You must be like, whatever, this is easy. We're going to beat the French, and they do it. That ain't me. Now, I know for a fact, France is looking for these two provinces down here in the south. And I'm fine with that. They can take it. It's close to their trade thingy jigger place, which is going to be important for them. Um, my big concern is getting the standing militaries out. So we are going to take our transport fleet and send them down there. Uh, we're also going to take our light... Oh, wait, no, that's the Royal Navy. Oh, did I just send the wrong ones? Certainly did. Those guys need to go and shift trade. Oh, they can't shift it yet. So we'll just protect trade in London for now. The other fleet, the Royal Navy, will come on down here to pull the Army of Ireland out of southern France. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, look, France, this is getting ridiculous. Oh, you won't. You won't let me give up. Oh, wait. Derp -a -derp. There we go. So we're going to say Labouard and Gascon are yours. And you still don't want that, eh? Hmm. Balls to the walls. Okay, well, we can afford to pay just a little bit here. Right? So you'll accept that. Great. That's going to drop our treasury in about half, but that's fine. I don't want these. In fact, I am going to hopefully be getting rid of all of my French possessions. Why? Because it's just keeping me on the continent. England's an island. We got Ireland. We got Scotland. We're going to form Great Britain. That's what matters. None of this crap down in here. Why, then, would I keep Cal and Normandy and Calais when I could just give those instead of money? I've got a plan. I've got a plan specifically for the Normandy region, and for Calais. Um, Calais, I'm going to sell to Burgundy, because I think they might be interested in that. And then for the Normandy region, I'm going to save up my diplomatic points and not spend them, which might be a bit crazy, but I'm going to convert the population from Norman to English. Then I'm going to make it a vassal, and that should prevent France. Well, it won't prevent France from going after it, but it won't give it to France. So that's just my, my little idea of giving a little jab to France and being like, look, take all your territory back except for Normandy. I'm going to be an English vassal of English people. So that's the initial plan. Uh, sit down, grab some popcorn, grab something to drink, kick back, relax, and watch me probably fail because that's what I do. <laughs> so we're going to send this peace offer off to France. There you go. Have fun with that. Then what else are we going to do? We're going to take a look. Uh, we got Henry the Sixth Lancaster, and he sucks. Um, just straight out sucks. Look at that. Zero, zero, zero. Dude's an idiot. And he's only 22, so we're going to have an idiot for quite a while. Um, we'll wait for the piece to actually go through. We can speed this up to three. Okay. So they've accepted our wonderful peace offer. Thank you. We're not at war anymore. We can actually just send them there. And send the Royal Navy in to collect the First Army and the Army of Ireland. Who will be based in Ireland. We got plans for that. Um, but for now, we can go ahead. Whoa, not missionaries. Save some money. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll get it down to about there. And let's select a mission. Spread our culture to Meath, form an alliance with Leinster, or conquer Aquitaine. Conquer Aquitaine is right out. Forming an alliance with Leinster? That sounds like a good idea. 
Normally, I'd be like all over spreading my culture. But like I say, I want to keep those for the Norman region. So let's just form an alliance with Lancaster. We'll do that. So we'll send a diplomat and say, hey, buddy, how about an alliance? That's wonderful. Now, with Scotland here, um, obviously, France is, is guaranteeing their independence up until 64. We're not going to be able to go after them until that's gone. So what I want to do is improve relations with Scotland. And like I'm going to do with the, with the Irish kingdoms, I might go to war with one or two of them. But for the most part, I want to take these diplomatically. Great Britain is going to form by the pen and not the sword. Damn it. So that's the plan there. Uh, you can see we're going to have to wait for Mr. Christopher Benbow to come back. Wonderful, wonderful. Any other missions? Construct a grand fleet. Royal marriage with Leinster or Conquer. We'll take the royal marriage. That sounds like a good idea. But first, we need to improve things with Scotland. So we're going to go and go to our relations little thing here and say, Hey, Scotland, Stuart, Lancaster, our houses can get along, right? Now we're looking at this. Our relations are pretty low, but Scotland's feeling threatened by us, so they'll actually accept a royal marriage. Let's do that. Bring our houses together, not pull them apart. All right, so the Royal Navy's in. We can take the first army. Um, oh, come on. Keep selecting the wrong damn ones. You go to London, and you go in there. There we go. I'll get fleet management down soon enough. Hop on your boats, and you'll go to Meath. Our diplomat has returned home from Leinster, so we are going to go and say, hey, when we can, how about a royal marriage? 13, 14, 15, royal marriage. Sounds like a plan to me. And then we'll do uh, some relations improving with Scotland once we're able to. There we go. Send that. Now, I personally like to keep one diplomat free just in case things happen where I need one. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Just keep one open just in case I need it. Oh, we can get another mission. Form an alliance with Connacht. Sure. Might as well just go after all of these guys. We'll send a royal marriage first. And one thing I do want to do after the lessons learned in my Austria game, so we can have Four relations max, so we'll go Leinster, Scotland, Connacht, and then one other Irish one, probably Munster, and then we can just conquer Ulster. Um, really for historical reasons. The Brits always got to conquer Ulster from the Irish. It's just how things are done. We got the fleet there, we can get the army of Ireland up on the boats, and off to Meath. Yay, Connacht is back. So, I believe my mission was actually an alliance with them, wasn't it? Yes. Well, now that we're family... Uh, bu -bu 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 where's... There we go. Seven, eight. Alliance. Perfect. So we're just racking up, especially the diplomatic power, which is going to be very, very useful. Uh, so now we're looking at it. We can construct a fleet, solidify papal relations, or conquer Aquitaine. Conquer Aquitaine again is out. Constructing a great fleet, not at the moment. Um, so solidify our papal relations, which... How are we doing with the Pope, anyway? Uh, 25. So we could do that. Um, the thing with England is... I'm not that keen on remaining Catholic, but I'm also not that keen on switching. Once I get a colonial empire going, which with England is bound to happen, you know, it's... It just becomes a pain, <laughs> it becomes a pain in the ass. Really. Uh, we can get rid of him, and that should help our budget situation out a little bit. You can see we're slightly above our land force limit, so we'll probably need to lose, what, three units? Uh, we can take them out of Ireland here, really. Create a new unit, we'll take some... 
infantry and uh, horsey unit and say, you know what, first army, we, we just don't need you. So that brings us down there. We're not wasting any money trying to keep useless things. Uh, we'll go Richard Plantagent there, and we will take the B -b 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 Army of Scotland, and we will put Henry Percy. In fact, what we could do is just combine it with the Royal Army. At this stage, I don't need three armies. We'll just have the Royal Army and the Army of Ireland, obviously, in Ireland. Uh, we're going to keep the Royal Navy there, because that's going to be the fleet used mainly to two of these guys around, although it looks like we're going to need another transport for that to work, and we can afford one easily. Let's go to our build ship menu. 226 days. I don't know if I'll get anything better than that. I think at the moment the best shipyard is in London. So we'll get that transport in, then we can shuttle around the Army of Ireland wherever it needs to go. And that should be good. Yeah, let's take a look at our plans to screw over the French. So we can start converting the Norman culture in Cal there, and I think we're going to. So let's do that. And, yeah. Not really any missions I want to go after right now. Another thing I can look at doing, actually, is selling... Calais to Burgundy. Let's see how much, how many gold can we get here? We can get 140. So what we paid to France for peace, we just gained back selling Calais. I'm fine with that. Beautiful. Uh, no, I don't need the diplomatic view. I just need the province view. How long is that going to take? Four years or so, that's fine. Um, do we want to invest in a cardinal? We might as well keep Essex on our side here. Just to start with. And what have we got? An alliance from Aragon? No. And I know we're sitting here with the... We should have an alliance with Portugal or something going on with Portugal. We don't. Okay, good. Um, I'm not going to get myself involved in any sort of Iberian crap. I don't really want that to happen. So we'll just ignore relations with Portugal for now and concentrate on the British Isles. That's the plan. So the map view isn't going to change a lot. <laughs> Not for the first little bit anyway, not until we can get um, exploration up and getting colonies set up and, and things like that. So I guess while this is ticking away, we can go take a look at um, how much are we making a turn? A buck fifteen? I don't know, it doesn't really seem like we can use... Ba -ba -ba. We are actually... Okay, good, we are. I guess I could have looked right there and seen that Benjamin Raleigh is indeed increasing relations with Scotland. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. With trade, we've got a merchant in Bordeaux, but that doesn't really make much sense. I'm thinking a merchant in the North Sea would be a much better idea. And then I can shift my fleet away from England, where I'm going to have the trade power in spades, to the North Sea just to make sure that the damn Danes and the Norwegians don't take more. I think we'll do that. We'll go to our trade view and recall our Bordeaux trader, who is indeed shifting stuff north. But you know, um, I'm just gonna gonna not want to get up in France's grill, and just concentrate on England. That's that's the plan. We live on an island. We're gonna put that to full use. Here's our tech tree, slowly working away. Um, and then our ideas. The first one we're going to go for is exploration, which I think makes the most sense, getting us the uh, explorers and conquistadors and an actual colonist. From there, we'll go probably with trade, economic, and then quality, you know, whatever in the military area. Thankfully, England's national ideas are pretty good. 
Uh, right away, we're going to get a boost to Navy, which is awesome, and a tax modifier. We'll get a couple of diplomatic relation increases, more Navy, lowered revolt risk, better discipline, and then less naval attrition. So in all, that's great. As one would expect, England is going to be set up to do exploration and colonization, along with um, relatively well militarily. And they're not going to be France. France is insane when it comes to... Oh, we got our merchant back. Good. So we will send him to the North Sea to transfer trade power down into London. France, theoretically, could just wipe the floor with us, and uh, militarily, anyway, initially. So we're going to be relying on our navy to keep everyone else out. And we'll just dump some more in. We almost got that last cog done. I actually should take a look at my sliders. I don't really need to be paying my fleet full, but I do like having my trade fleets and my naval fleets almost ready to go for action. So I'm going to leave those rel higher than I do the military. Just because if you ever do get in involved in a war somewhere and you got your fleet out, you want it to be sitting fairly decent already before you slide them up to full. Military, especially with England, doesn't really matter. Again, you're on an island. The wars that I'm going to be fighting, especially in Ireland, are going to be useless. <laughs> or, you know, I mean, it's not like Scotland or any of the Irish miners are going to be able to build an army big enough to, to actually counter what England can throw at them. Now we're making enough to get one advisor in. I'm going to go with a diplomatic one, uh, preferably a chief one. And unfortunately, it's a spy offense. I don't really use spies all that much, but really what I'm worried, what I'm more concerned about is getting the extra point. So we'll do that. At this stage, there's not much for me to spend on, spend my money on. So it's just going to sit there and collect. Several of the leading members of the government are deeply worried about some changes proposed to how the realm should be ruled. They demand a stop to such outrageous reforms based on our tried and proved traditions, and naturally avoiding mentioning how the changes would impact their own power base. Accept the demands or ignore them. Um, we seem to be generating enough administration points. Granted, I haven't spent on anything. But... With prestige not really sitting there all that great, we will. Well, that's 50 administration. We'll hit. We'll take the prestige hit. For now, it's fine. England not being that prestigious. We'll work on that in the future. Like I say, my biggest concern is getting this up so we can get Normandy transferred over. We need 150, and we get four a month. So it's going to take a little while to get there. Hopefully we'll get some pop-ups that are like, hey, naval tradition, take, take, take. The ongoing oppression and exploitation of the Welsh minority has finally reached its boiling point. The citizens of Glamorgan have decided to take up arms against the oppressors. To suppress them, to try to negotiate, we're going to suppress. Because six Welsh, six Welsh regiments... The six Welsh regiments are going to be nothing for the 19, or the, what, the, yeah, the 19 regiments of the Royal Army. We'll just march them around to try and avoid attacking over river, river penalties. Let our morale go up and then launch into an assault. Okay, I don't care about the Provence declaring war on the Papal States. There we have it. The Welsh shall never be free. We can drop that back down, so we're making money. 
No disputed successions to worry about. No missions worth taking. And now, actually, what I can do, while I'm sitting here with not much else going on, is to take a covert action and fabricate a claim on Ulster. Let's go ahead and do that. I've got to say, one of the nice things about EU4 is the interface and this little tab here. I know it's been in other Paradox games since, like, Victoria, but this just seems to give you all the information you need by just a quick little hover over. And here we can see that the progress on the claim at Ulster is going up. We can see that the cultural conversion of Cow is going... Oh, excuse me, is going along. We've got our army set up there, our merchants, what they're up to, our navies... I loves it. One of the things that I do miss, however, from Victoria 2 is the uh, current wars tab. It's really difficult. Like, for instance, if we go over to Provence here, I can see they're at war with the Papal States and Savoy, but I don't know why. I don't know what the war goals, war goals are or anything like that. That's something that I really miss from Victoria 2. It helps when you've got an ally who's involved in a war and you want to see what's going on. Do you want to jump in on the war to help them or not? It's, I, I enjoy it. Or I miss it. <laughs> I miss that from, from Victoria 2. But otherwise, I mean, the map, if we go... And one of the reasons I did pick England, to be honest, is once you form Great Britain, you can go to the terrain map mode when you're in Europe, and it's much, much easier to see. Granted, the borders aren't all that difficult, but once I own all the islands and I know, hey, this is all mine, you know, you can you can zoom in on the map, you can see the, the snow on the areas, on the cities there. Up in the north, you've got some ice on the waters and the rivers. Other things I like, when it's winter, it's dark, like the screen is darker, and as we come into spring, it'll get lighter and off. Oh, the graphical things they did with this game, I just absolutely love. All right, so we were discovered, but whatever. This, sh this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, while we're also doing this, I should... Oh, I don't have any free diplomats. Of course. Well, how are things going with Scotland? They're slowly coming up. We can feel it in the wind. Soon our equestrian elite will be nothing more than a dream remembered as the chivalrous tradition dies out before the onslaught of modernity. The world is changing, but for now, for one last time, let the knights of England ride. Forward to glory! Yeah, absolutely forward to glory. Who would be like, no, no, we need to get with the times. People will look down on us. That's like the comet. It only needs one option to take. In my humble opinion, anyway. Alright, so we're getting close to being able to have enough points to convert Normandy. And then obviously, you know, that'll, that'll cost us a bit in our force limits. You can see we're already two above still. But that's fine. Once we take Ulster, it'll jump back up a little bit. In fact, we can go up to speed level 4 to try and get these done quicker. And da, 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 da. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100%. Excellent. We'll drop down to 3, because that's my war fighting speed. We'll take and we'll boost army maintenance. And again, my complaint from Victoria 2 still stands. I'd like to only do this for individual armies. I'd love to click the Army of Ireland and say, max funding. Whereas I can leave the Royal Army back in London with nothing. Anyway, check diplomacy out here. What have they got? Improving relations with England and Scotland. That's fine. Improving relations with Leinster. That's fine. And they've got a conquest, Cosabella and Connacht. So they've got no allies, which is good. Good in my books. Alright. You guys are looking half strength. We should be able to take an army of three Irishmen. Declare a war. Take Ulster. The Irish won't want to join in. That's fine. We won't need them. 
Go like that. We'll send the Royal Navy out to do the blockades. And just like that, we've killed off the Ulsterites. Oh, they actually had a ship down there. You see, it's it's handy. Funding that navy, man. It's useful stuff. And the siege view, pretty much unchanged. Although it does present more information. So you can see, as usual, the defending garrison, the fort levels, the attacking, the, or the sieging army, what attrition they're taking. Then we've got this. Each time a siege phase happens, a die is rolled. So this is how they decide... Um, what damage you're doing, you know, things like that. <laughs> and you can see here, the red, so Surrender and Defender's Desert are in red. You've got no chance of that. Your best chance each siege phase is to just get a supply shortage, which is going to drop morale a little bit, drop the troop forces. And as each siege phase progresses, um, the no percent chance starts becoming some percent chance. Man, my skills with the English language? Amazing. <laughs> and there's nice things too, um, not enforcement of ordinances. Monarchs ruled by issuing ordinances, but they were almost powerless to enforce them. Enforcement depended upon the local powers that would not always be as vigilant as the monarchs would have desired. Let them handle it, or increase attempts. Um... It's administrative power, so we'll go increase attempts. And I have just noticed that we've got enough to start converting Normandy into English. So that's exciting. So yes, so here also we can see that the war exhaustion and prestige has an effect on the fort defense. So currently, the defenders in Ulster are getting a negative 3.6 uh, penalty to their defensive abilities. And we're getting close. We're getting close to them dying out. Okay. We can also see here our allies in Leinster are going after Munster, which will make... If they win and they actually annex that area... That'll make our conquest of Ireland a hell of a lot easier. Which is going to be the first goal here. We need the Irish uh, under English control relatively quickly. Thankfully, it's um, pretty easy to do diplomatically. So this war with Ulster here, or Tyrone, will, ha will probably be the only Irish war we have to fight. Which is handy. Um, what just happened? Our heir. So we actually have a heir, Mary Lancaster. A 242, which is good. She is much better than Henry with a 000. Now, I know there is a special event for the Holy Roman Empire when um, there's a female heir. I'm not sure if the same thing happens with England. Somehow, I don't think so. Uh, they shouldn't have that much of an issue with a female heir if you take a look at their history. We'll just go ahead and drop our army maintenance back now because, hey, we just beat Ulster. And so, we can say, you're mine. Full annexation. I don't have enough diplomatic power. How much do I need for that? 45, and we're sitting at 22. We're going to be occupying Ulster for a while. That's fine. That's fine, I'm sure. Just as long as I remember to actually annex them when I have the diplomatic power to do so. Plus four, that's going to take a while. Looks like we're making enough now that we could probably get another advisor in. So let's see, what have we got? We've got land maintenance modifier, so that would save us some money, or a yearly inflation. Now, yearly inflation is handy later on. At the moment, we don't need to worry about it. We don't have any inflation. So we'll take the land maintenance modifier, which should theoretically let us save some money on our troops. All 
However, it's still costing us more than if we didn't have him. But we're also getting the military research point, which is going to be helpful. Let's face it, we're going to need it. With our smaller manpower, um, it is going to be very, very handy to have. Now, I have claims. No, that's fine. Oh, we can actually claim it now, can't we? Sue for peace. Annex. Send. Yay! So now we got a bit of overextension. We can take a look at this new feature. Um, I briefly touched on it in my EU4 comparison to other Paradox games um, with my super extended, super overextended Spanish Empire. But basically, if you annex an area that you don't have a core on, you're going to get these over these overextension penalties. So we can see here, because of my owning of Ulster, we've got a national revolt risk increase, we've got a stability cost modifier increase, our trade power abroad is horribly reduced, mercenary cost goes up, our diplomatic re reputation, our yearly papal influence go down, and better relations over time go down. This is why I prefer the diplomatic route to conquering Ireland and Scotland. It does take a little bit more time. I won't be Great Britain for a little while, but it's handier because you don't take as many penalties. So we can see here it will take 62 administration points um, to turn our claim into a core. So let's go ahead and do that. We definitely need to. And once that happens, um, once it becomes a core of England, things are fine. So we can see here... Um, Poor Scotland got drug into a war because they're allied with Novgorod. Don't know why you would do that, Scotland. <laughs> um, but because we were at war and because of the aggressive expansion, we've still got a little negative modifiers to our relations, but we're the same religion. We've got a royal marriage. Things will improve, and uh, in a couple of decades, you know, we'll be looking just fine with Scotland. Uh, I just want to make sure that there is nothing else that we can do what we could do is go and proclaim a, <laughs> proclaim a guarantee on them. That should help them <laughs> like us a bit more. Um, but other than that, that's about all we can do. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That way, if anybody does try to go to war against Scotland, it's obvious that the English want them and no one else will try it. So we've got that. Now let's take a look at our missions, we can see it's still the same three missions, so we're going to go with the Papal mission. And because we've got a spare diplomat, we can go along and say, Hey, Pope, like us more. And over time, he will. That's just how that works. Yay! So now, Co is populated, or Cow is populated by Englishmen and women, English people. So once Normandy swaps over, we can release them as a vassal and make it a little difficult for the French to have to deal with them without England having to directly rule over them and worry about that kind of junk. So I think we'll take this to 1450 and leave the episode there. So... There we go. We'll go back to the political view so people can see the glorious English Empire. We're getting there. Oh, I've been lazy. So we can see here, Connacht, those Irish bastards have been like, no, we need a cardinal. That's the word I'm looking for. Thankfully, they've only invested 20 points. We've got 42 kicking around, so we can just come along and be like, no, you know what? This, this guy's English. All right. Nobody is taking Essex from England. And that should be good. We should be nice and secure. We got some money coming in, so we can finally get a last advisor. But again, the point is nice. It's kind of useless to spend on a Master of the Mint right now. I have no need for it. So we'll just leave them and let these things roll in. We got 3031, January 1st, 1450. We'll pause it there. Uh, and yeah, we'll leave the episode here. So, 
save the game. We'll overwrite my old England game. Easy to form Great Britain. Can't wait for that to happen. Uh, thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Um, as the game progresses, obviously I will be taking advice. What have you from you guys, as always. You want to see England go in a particular direction? Let me know if it matches up with what I'm thinking of doing, or if it gives me inspiration into doing something better. I will probably listen to it. So thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you next time.